Hi, and welcome to this FabFilter Timeless 2 tutorial, which will explore a couple of different ways to use delay effects. Let's start by picking the clean preset. In this case, I'm processing a guitar part, and the plug is inserted on the guitar track. So I can control the balance between the wet delayed signal and the original dry signal using the mix knobs to the right. The two delay lines are fed from the left and right channels by default, as we can see from the schematic style arrows. And the delay outputs are panned hard the same way, so we have a simple stereo delay configuration. And I can dial in separate, independent delays for the left and right channels. Or I can turn on the padlock symbol to set both delay times the same using just the upper knob. The curved slider turns on BPM sync, so the delay times are set in relation to the host tempo instead of as absolute values in milliseconds. And the delay time knob switches to become an offset knob. I can use this to deliberately set the delay slightly out of time, which might help to add a slight groove or prevent the delays from disappearing in the context of a mix. Or I could click the dots around the edge to create triplet delays or dotted delays. I'm going to set the sync slider to eighth notes and click the dot to the right to set a dotted offset of 1.5. Now if I play a regular eighth note pattern, the dotted delays will fill the gaps with sixteenth notes. And I can create complex arpeggiated patterns in a Steve Hillage or Ed Wynn kind of style. I'm going to add a little more interest with some filtering. Let's click the filter display to slide open the panel and show the controls. And I'm going to switch filter 1 to a bandpass type and sweep the cut off around the mid frequencies to create a wah kind of effect on just the delay repeats. I might also turn up the resonance a bit and switch the filter type to something with a little more dirt, like the tube setting. Wah effects are traditionally controlled via a foot pedal. So I'm going to click the MIDI Learn button at the bottom, click the Filter 1 cutoff knob to select it, and move one of my MIDI foot controllers to assign it. Of course, you will need to route the incoming MIDI to the plugin. The method will depend on the host DAW you're using, so you may need to consult your manual if you're not sure how to do this for an effect plugin. As we can see, the cutoff knob is now assigned to MIDI controller 4 and I can sweep the filter through its entire range using my foot pedal. However, the range available is wider than any wah pedal, and much wider than is useful for a guitar. So I'm going to take a different approach instead. I'll delete this controller assignment, and turn off MIDI Learn, then click the plus symbol to add a new modulation source, and add a new MIDI source. I want to use the same foot pedal, which we already know was sending MIDI controller 4. So I'll click the type field and pick controller, then set the number field below to 4, and then click the modulation assign button and drag it over to the filter 1 cutoff knob to assign a modulation slot. I can now balance the cutoff setting and the modulation depth to set precisely the range of control I find most useful. I could then record my expression pedal movements as a MIDI clip while recording my guitar part as audio. And this gives me the option to edit the controller data afterwards if needed. I'm going to take this a bit further and click the plus sign again. And this time I'll load a new envelope follower and link it to filter 1 resonance. And I can now control the resonance of the filter via my playing dynamics. Of course, the tempo sync slider assumes that the host tempo is correct. So this will only work properly if you're working to a tempo grid in your DAW. If you recorded a band playing live without a click track, the DAW tempo will probably not be correct, so the sync settings will still be out of time. It's still easy to create tempo sync effects, however. Click the time display to turn it into a tap tempo button, and tap in the rhythm you require. You can create dotted or triplet delays by tapping a dotted or triplet pattern. Or you could use a calculator to work out the required subdivision. Then double click the knob to enter the value directly. Of course, delays don't always have to be tempo synced. And fixed delay settings can be useful in many different ways. 
For example, I can create classic slapback effects with delay times of around 100 to 150 milliseconds. I'm going to set a much shorter time, however, of about 30 milliseconds or less. Then I'll use the pan ring around the dry mix knob to pan the dry signal over to the left, then pan the wet signal all the way to the right. Notice that even with the wet mix knob turned all the way up, and both filters bypassed, the sound still seems to come from the left where the dry signal is panned. This is known as the Haas effect. Short delays of less than about 30 milliseconds are not perceived as separate echoes, but instead add an extra sense of space and depth. If I turn down the wet mix knob, the dry signal still seems to be coming from the left, but the effect now seems quite two-dimensional by comparison. Of course, you need to be a little bit careful with this technique. If I check this in mono, we can hear comb filtering artefacts created by mixing the dry and delayed signals. It might therefore make sense to turn the wet level down by a few dB. This will substantially reduce the comb filtering effects in mono, and the delay will still add a sense of depth and dimension, even at quite low levels. Of course, you may want to use this technique on another element in the mix, in order to place it on the opposite side of the stereo field. I could simply copy this plug to another track, and then reverse the panning of the dry and wet signals. However, it might also be worth setting a very slightly different delay time. This will shift the comb filtering artifacts to different frequencies, and may help the two parts to fit together better when the mix is monoed. Another variation of this technique may be more convenient when dealing with many parts. This time I've set up Timeless as a send effect instead of an insert, so I can send many different parts to this one instance by dragging sends from the relevant tracks. Again, the method for setting up a send effect will depend on your DAW, so check the manual if in doubt. I'm now going to globally disable the dry signal for this instance of Timeless by clicking the padlock icon under the dry mix knob. With a send configuration, we already have dry signal, so we don't want to add any more. Now I'm going to set up my Haas type of delay again, somewhere below 30 milliseconds. Then pan the left delay all the way over to the right. I'm actually holding the Alt key as I do this, so the right delay line is being panned in the opposite direction. Every channel I send to this bus will now have a short Haas delay added, which will be panned in the opposite direction to the dry signal. So I can quickly and easily build up a three-dimensional soundstage by adjusting the pan controls for each channel. And of course, we're just a few steps away from some more creative treatments. Let's click the plus symbol and add an XLFO, then link it to one of the delay times. Notice that the pitch is now changing as the delay time is modulated. We can change this behavior by switching the mode to stretch. And now the delays retain their pitch as the time changes using clever granular techniques. But I'm gonna switch back to tape mode instead Turn the modulation depth right down and adjust the XLFO rate to create a subtle chorus type of effect. Let's set up the same modulation for the other delay line, then invert it with the button to the left of the slot so the delays are modulated in opposite directions for a wider stereo effect. That's all I've got time for in this video. Thanks for watching.